A few weeks ago, I made a video about this guitar, how I modified it, did the rubber bridge, put the controls in. I didn't know what I was doing, but it turned out okay. I watched one YouTube video and bought it on a whim. But this guitar, the Dan Electro Baritone, I have almost bought this guitar 57 times, not an exaggeration. Of course, I'll demonstrate it, but I'm gonna tell you why, as a music for media composer, that this is the sound that I've been missing. Most of you love the rubber bridge guitar as much as I do. Many of you don't. But one thing it did do was make me think that I am now a guitar tech. For what it's worth, I don't know if this guitar needs a truss rod adjustment, but I'm gonna do it because I've always been scared of that. And as far as I can tell, the only way to do that is by taking the neck off of the guitar. big part of this channel is me showing you my process. Sometimes I'm gonna do amazing things and you're gonna be in awe of my skills. But that also means that I have to show you moments like this. Where exactly is the truss rod adjustment? It's not there. My guess is that it's hidden behind this little screw. Now you all know how to take the neck off of a Dan Electro baritone guitar. the perfect size Allen wrench. I'm going to make a quarter turn and see what happens. I believe it was bowed up. I honestly don't know what I'm looking at. I know that some of you who watch me make these guitar videos, it kills you that I'm even attempting this, but I can take it. Your comments make me better. Sometimes. Box. Yeah. Box four. Before we listen to this, let's compare it to my Telecaster. This is my TAF, the Amp Factory Deluxe sound. A little out of tune, but I'm choosing B minor. There is a reason for that. This is the B. Listen to that. The lowest B I can get. To the down electric we go. The nice thing about this, well, one of the nice things about it is it's quite sparkly. I don't think I'm very sparkly. My low string is now a B. I can play my E minor chords. Here's that same B minor chord, but with an E minor shape. This B is a solid octave below the lowest B on the Telecaster. Just running through a quick delay on the El Capistan. The nice thing about buying this guitar is that it does give you something totally different. There's a difference between P90s and humbuckers. There is absolutely a difference between a baritone guitar and a normal standard tuning guitar. Standard tuning? This is Soft Drums. It's a contact instrument of mine that you can purchase. Only if you have the full version of Contact. If you don't have the full version of Contact and it was made available for the free Contact player, would you buy it? That is the question. Please leave that answer in the comments. It also has loops. I'm just laying down something that I can play to. Tempo is 67, so I've set it to 70 and it's slowing it down. I wanna write a track that when you strip it down to the drums and bass, it still works, or at least the drums and bass and maybe the baritone guitar. Very heavy jazz bass. My trusty Ampig profile on the Kemper. Let's turn that off. I laid down simple whole notes in the A section. Quarter notes in the B section and eighth notes in the big section at the end. I might replace it, but now I have a foundation. I hear the drums getting much bigger, but I hear the kind of brushy thing happen at the beginning and the end. So we're gonna use our imagination in the middle. Dan Electro, how about a pick? They're all the same and none of them are what I want. So I'll just go with the trusty old yellow, yellow Dunlop. I can barely reach the tuning pegs. In production music world, 
If the guitar is a little bit out of tune, you just pretend it's a band you like where the guitarist never seems to get his guitars in tune. Let's add our front end. The reason why I am making that face is because I know that something doesn't sound And quite. I'm gonna record a super si The reason why I'm making that face is because I know that something isn't quite right. And I realize way later that the amp stack button, you see that, was off. I was just playing the guitar direct without any amp simulation whatsoever. I have filmed this video over multiple days and I have made more mistakes that I made in year one of YouTube. I said some good things, it wasn't all bad, like this part about how the reduced mixes or the minimal mixes that we make are often the most used. And I'm gonna record a super simple guitar part. I'm not trying to change the world with this sound. I'll go through in the end and add elements that are interesting and catch your ear. But truthfully, the drum part that I eventually come up with, the bass guitar part, and the simple guitar parts are probably gonna be what gets used the most anyways in the end. I'm gonna do a driving eighth note part. I'm gonna throw the guitar over to the left for effects. I threw the guitar over to the left, but in screen flow, which I captured the audio from Pro Tools, I was recording in mono. And we're gonna get my telly out. Let's change amps. Let's use something like the Deluxe, maybe. I know I'm gonna want more reverb, so let's just go ahead and add it, right? You can already tell they fit well together. The next day or the next almost evening, look out the window. That's a good looking shot. Blue hour. Now let's throw it out left and I'm gonna bring in the telly. Both electric guitars, very different. Let's skip ahead. This is where I was listening back thinking, the guitar is still not quite right, so I did a little something about it. I needed a little bit more, so I added Decapitator. And as I bring the drums up, I'll probably add more distortion, more fuzz. I know that this is gonna step up in energy, so I'm not playing to those particular drums. I'm playing to what I want those drums to be. Here we have the Electro Voice RE20. I need to finish this video so I can get a haircut. I'm going to perform a non-scientific test where I talk into this microphone, maybe even talk like this to get those low frequencies, and see how it sits with the baritone versus the normal standard tuning electric guitar. Headphones. The beginning of the track is very quiet, so I imagine a voiceover that sounds somewhat like this. I don't need this test to tell me that the baritone sounds cool. However, I would like to see if we open up something like FabFilter Pro Q2 or 3. Well, I don't know where we are right now. Visually, what kind of information are we going to get from the low frequencies of my voice and the meat of the guitars? And now I'm going to sing. Let's bring the gain down so we hit the compressor. I am singing loud. I'm singing loud I can't get much louder than this But I'm higher than the frequency range So I'll go down Like I'm international I'll just talk I'll say things like my camera's over there And the microphone is sitting in front of me And I had a hamburger for lunch today Yeah Away. <laughs> There's nobody here. I, don't, I hope. Listen to the, the sound of my voice as I adjust the EQ on the baritone. The beginning of the track is very quiet, so I imagine a voiceover that sounds somewhat like this. Yes, there are lots of S's really cutting through your brain. I think it's all dependent on how the guitar is processed. What you're seeing right there is probably fighting with the low end of my vocal more. The top end of the guitar is fighting with this part of my voice, the top end of my voice. If these got super gnarly, gnarly is a word we don't use enough anymore. My little demonstration I think worked. You could see how when I got really high, 
it seemed to fight more with the electric guitar and when it was down low it was fighting more with the baritone guitars the result is you've got to use your brain both guitars are primarily in the frequency range there's a reason why vocals in rock music are so much quieter than they are in say folk music you can really carve out the space for the vocal in those quieter less aggressive types of music if you want big electric guitars something's got to give Got my haircut, as you can see. I want to call this the pre-FAQ, questions you're probably going to ask. First, another mistake I made. In parts of this video, I had my fuzzy cat on the microphone in the studio. And this thing, pop filter on as well. So, it sounds like I'm sick, I'm not sick, I'm just dumb. These are called lipstick pickups because you guessed it, they look like lipstick. I'm not good with the descriptive words to describe these, these sounds, but it's its own thing. I bought this used on Facebook Marketplace, $400, but it was still in the box. New, it's $569 for the sparkly version and $549 without the sparkles. And I'll put a link in the description. It will be an affiliate link from Sweetwater. String gauge, I have no idea. It's the strings that came on it. If you have an idea, let me know. Or if you have a string recommendation for the baritone, would love to know. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments. But I think I'll jump back to my original video that I scripted in hopes that I can keep you on the platform. Is it a one trick pony? Might be, but it is a good trick. And I'm very anxious to hear it with my modified lap steel guitar with benders. Watch this video to learn more about it. Talk soon.